Howdy guys, welcome to Three Mississippi. Sid here and I'll be your cruise director. Uh, as you know, we have been working on the farm and uh, this time of year, that means hitting up the farmer's market and selling some of the things that we're making here on the farm. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that we've been making. And we showed you on Friday how Mike makes his pasta sauce and I'm gonna show you today how I make my lemon zucchini bread and show you some of the other things that we're selling that we've made. But I'm also going to show you some of the craziness of the week and some of the things that happened to us. I just ran by our buddy Bart's place that has the booth next to us that had the honey at the farmer's market because he grew a bunch of basil. <gasps> and he gave us this amazing box of basil, guys. Mike's gonna use this to um, make his pasta sauce for this week. Take a look at this. Look at this basil, you guys. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how good it smells. I mean, there's nothing like fresh basil and this is some beautiful basil. It's amazing. We got a huge package in the mail, guys. Ginormous. Fort Flux. Fort Flux. That's pretty cool. Does this mean I, I now get to get a flamingo because it's say. on there no, for the coup? No, you coup? do not get so to get a flamingo. That means Adele has given her blessing that I can get a flamingo. That was all done with a router and then painted in. Yeah, it's really it's nice. Pretty, it's pretty nice. It's I mean, she, I think she did say that it might need another coat or so of shellac, but they put a bunch of coats of shellac on it. And I'm, I'm wondering if they made it. What was the, oh, you said there was a tag on it. Campbell creation made it. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Have to look up Campbell yeah. We'll put a couple more coats of shellac on it, at least on the back. Yeah. It does. I can tell it has a coat. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can but we'll put some more and then I'll hang it under the eave. Yeah. So where, it won't get as messed up. Yeah. It's not going to get rain coming down on it. Just if some side driving rain hits it. Um, That's very cool. Yeah. She sent it as a late, uh, wedding anniversary gift for us. She said, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Did I get you anything? Um, you got her chocolate in a car. Do you want to know? Because I helped you pick it out. I left the chocolate in the freezer in the you shop. You left the chocolate in the freezer. Never oh, and then you gave it. it to me like and on. And I'm the one who She gave it to you. Yeah. But I gave you the later. card. He did you, you did remember to give me the card this time. Yeah. yeah. But what's in your driver's side of your door? A All stuff. the other cards. From All the, the other cards from the last 17 years <laughs> that you haven't given me. Yeah. yeah. It's, cool. a, it's a running joke. This is joke. really cool. This is really cool. Guys, we're going to have to get this hung up once we get the coupe actually finished. I can probably hang that before the coop's completely finished. That's pretty cool looking. Once we get the coop finished, we're going to hang it outside there. It does need another coat of shellac on it, but what a cool gift from Mike's mom. Uh, gotta love that there's a flamingo on there too. And I think that's going to look really good out there by the coop. Well, we had a little adventure on the way home, <laughs> finding a few stray dogs. Typical night here. Um, there's some cows on the road, calves to be specific. Frankie's running up to the other neighbor's house. Um, they're right here. I don't know if you guys can see because they're two little black calves. They've wandered away from the truck a little bit. I just sent Frankie up. There's another guy that's got cattle back this way. So I sent her back there um, to uh, see if they might be his, but he's got longhorns and these don't look like that. So I'm not sure if these are his or not, but our other buddy's got cattle and I just messaged him too, but his, I think are not over here. I think he moved them. So I'm not sure uh, whose cows these are, but we're trying to get a, trying to, trying to figure out, get these calves back where they belong. <laughs> it's just a, just a regular Wednesday night. 
<laughs> so those calves that were on the side of the road, uh, we did end up finding the owners. I guess they are a couple of bottle calves that have been getting out uh, quite frequently lately. And so Mike was able to find the owner that lived down the other county road. And uh, he said just to leave them be, that they were fine, that they'll wander back, I guess, when they need another bottle. We are just hitting it hard out here and I cannot wait to get this fencing done. We're just chipping away at it as the weather and time permits. And I'm hoping, hoping we'll get it done and be able to get these animals out here real soon. First of all, neither of us are fence builders. Uh, normally, we are now. When, huh? We are now. Normally, when we're building something, I halfway know what I'm doing, and I'm trying to teach Frankie. Right now, I have no idea what I'm doing. I watched a couple of YouTube videos, and basically, what we're doing is we're tying this uh, sheep and goat fence off to this post, around the post, and then we're going to hit it with horseshoe nails, and then. Theoretically, that's gonna be strong enough that we can go to the other end of this, hook up to it with a tractor and pull this thing tight and it won't come flying off right here. When do you need them? After it has cut your fingers? Yeah. yeah. When do you need a hard hat? After, after the, after the yeah, after the brain injury. When do you need the seatbelt? After I crash. Good job. And you learned all this from your mother, right? Yep. I'm gonna kick you. Oh, I can't see. I, I can. Yes, see dark. Where you have a flashlight in your pocket? No, I'll hold. Uh -huh. He doesn't need a super bright flashlight. Don't let it slip. Hold it with tight with both hands. I am trying so Wacky doodle. We're not stretching this tonight. Yeah, that's not cool, bro. It's too dark. It's too dark. Dark like your soul. So uh, we're trying to put this fence up, obviously. Uh, it's not all the way up, but it's partially up. And it's uh, it's gonna stay like this tonight because right. it, it's it's dark. Cause we run out of daylight. Yeah. It's fence building stuff, man. It's for the birds. Yeah, your your Ridge Life shirt is all wet now. Yeah. Go Ridge Life. <laughs> <laughs> the farmers market is no joke, guys, and it means we really have to throughout the week kind of pay attention to some of the things that we have to do in order to get ready for that Saturday morning gig. There's a lot of harvesting, canning and baking that has to take place and a lot of it kind of has to happen last minute so thursday and friday are super super busy days uh, trying to get all of that done tuesday wednesday mike kind of usually has been making his pasta sauce and then of course the pickles once we harvest the cucumbers the pickles are able to be made and, and jarred it's been kind of a constant whirlwind there's a lot of things that sort of just kind of pile up on each other. And it does sort of make for a little bit of chaos in the house, which I am not a huge fan of, um, but it's only a few more weeks in theory. So <laughs> I guess we'll just see how it goes. Yes, I am wearing an apron. We are gonna be doing some baking for the farmer's market today. So lemon zucchini bread is on the menu. So let's get after it. Now I'm making a very large batch of this lemon zucchini bread. So I'm going to be using much larger measurements, but I'll post down below in the description 
the measurements for a single batch. And in my experience, a single batch usually will make two and a half to three loaves of a regular bread pan loaf. You of course can also do it in like one nine by 11 if you wanted. Got my bread pans all greased. It used to be at 350, but my oven is a little off on temp. So I'm setting it to 365, but it needs to be at 350 in the actual oven. Frankie's actually outside. It's pouring rain right now. She's harvesting uh, for tomorrow's farmer's market. She tried to beat the rain. She didn't. I just gotta hope that we don't lose power while I'm baking bread. Because last week when I made bread, uh, we had a tornado situation and the power flickered. So we'll see if, if we can keep the power going while I finish this bread. Mid zucchini bread making and I have to abruptly leave because I have to go get changed for the farmer's market for tomorrow. And I gotta get there before the bank closes. So we are scooting into town real quick, dodging rain uh, as we do it. Let's go get some change. to give us a bank bag to keep our um, keep our change in. How fantastic is that? Gotta love a small town bank. And they all, uh, mind you, I've been in this bank, I don't know, maybe four or five times now in a year. Um, they all greeted me by name, every single teller, every single person in the bank just greeted me by name, asked about Frankie. They're so nice in there. Anyway, so shout out to uh, to everybody at Regions Bank in Houston. They're awesome. They're awesome. Especially my girl Mackenzie. She usually is the one that helps me out. She's a sweetheart. Anyway, back home, finish making bread. Let's go. Guys, while those are in the oven, that's the time for me to make the glaze. 
and to get to these dishes that I just made. So for one batch of this, you're really only gonna need about four tablespoons of lemon juice, two to four tablespoons of the zest of the lemons, and then two to four cups of the sugar. Again, it's all to taste and all to the consistency you, that you like. I go by what it looks like versus actual measurements, and I just kind of play around with it until it's right. So I'll show you. As you can see, it's obviously way too runny still. It needs a lot more sugar. Now, if you don't like the idea of doing the glaze, you can also just dust the top with your uh, powdered sugar across the top. That's fine too. But that lemon glaze really does kick it up a notch and people really like it. Or you can leave it plain, I suppose too, but what is a cake without a little frosting, right? That's what I say. Now, because this is a true glaze for it, um, you know, a lot of times when you're making like an icing, an icing will have sometimes have, um, you know, vanilla and milk in it and things like that. But this is a glaze that's gonna stiffen so that uh, almost become like a shell over it. It won't be tacky anymore. Um, so you do want to make sure that you're not adding like, oh, I usually put milk in mine or whatever, because if you're gonna be putting this in a bread bag, you don't, you just want it to be a true glaze. This is the same kind of glaze I use when I make scones. It's the same glaze I use when I make my cranberry Christmas cake. Um, it's just a really good universal light, uh, light glaze. This is pretty close to what I want, yeah. So the first couple loaves are out here and doing my little toothpick check and it's coming out as clean as I want it to. And I also can tell by the resistance when I push on it, you want it to have just a little bit of give, but you don't want it to be so dry that it's like crumbly, right? You want it to still be, have a little resistance there. The other ones that I had on the bottom rack needed a couple more minutes. So I moved them up to the top rack. Also, I was having trouble with my oven temperature fluctuating um, a little bit, but you never want your toothpick to come out completely clean when you're doing like a cake um, because that means it's gonna be too dry inside when it finishes cooling. So I'm gonna let it cool on here for a few minutes. Then I'm gonna pop these out and put them on the racks and let them finish cooling completely. Then it'll be time to put my glaze on. So these have cooled for a few minutes and I'm just, popping them out. I just kind of loosen the edges a little bit. Of course, I'm using nonstick pans and I grease them really well like I showed you before. Top. And gently place it on the rack. And that one was a little hotter than I anticipated. <laughs> but anyway, it usually goes a little more smoothly than that. Um, that one was more recently out of the oven. So anyway, these I just pulled out a little bit sooner because my oven has a poltergeist. So depending on what position it's in, I have to rotate things through anyway. But you can see they look pretty good. I'm gonna let these completely, completely cool. Don't think like, oh, they feel cool here. No, make sure they're completely cool all the way around before you put that glaze on because there's just gonna be a hot soupy mess if you don't. So we're gonna let these completely cool, then we'll do that part. So these are nice and cooled down. I'm gonna go ahead and put my glaze on these. I always uh, put wax paper underneath so it doesn't make a mess all over my, my counter. And I just kind of paint it on like a, like a little topping. You can see it's already starting to set. And the ones that I just set in the back are just dripping off. That's it guys, they are ready to be bagged once they finish setting. And they look a little something like that when they're all done in their bags with their labels and ready for the market. There you have it guys, that was our crazy week and our lemon zucchini bread recipe for the farmer's market. We hope you enjoyed, don't forget to like the channel. No, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, 
I can't. They're doing jumping jacks behind me. <laughs> they're being Now they're hurt. smacking each other. Welcome to the chaos. Thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay blessed and safety's off.